Hello guys and welcome to TGN the Game Nerd, the show where I talk about or play games and today we're going to be playing Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and started up the first trial of the last case, or at least the last case that I'll be playing for this uh, series. For now, we're just going to go ahead and continue on with this. The last statement. Also, last time, Maya objected to Lada's statement and she unfortunately got held in contempt of court and had to be arrested. But with that, we were able to cross-examine Lada's new testimony, and that's what we're going to be doing today. So, the last statement. I saw it clear as day. The man on the boat was Mr. Edgeworth. Well, what about the other man? You cannot expect to be allowed to blithely ignore your promise, Mr. Wright. I believe you claimed that there was a contradiction in the witness's testimony. Well, find it, if you can. Mr. Wright, I have to assign you a penalty. Oh, crud. Uh, damn. That's it? Uh-oh. I don't know if I can find anything in that. What will Maya say? I saw it clear as day. The man on the boat was Mr. Edgeworth. So the contradiction here, and I'm shocked that we actually got a penalty for pressing something. Uh, Lake Photo. She says she cl saw it clear as day, but her professional camera couldn't even see who it was. Gotcha. Gotcha, Miss Hart. Finally. What? You got what? Look at this photograph. The photo I took? The very same. There's something I want you to see in this photo. It's quite clearly visible. The fog, Miss Hart. So? So? This picture was taken with a professional, high-quality film, correct? Yet even it could not capture the faces of the men on the boat. Yet you claim you saw Mr. Edgeworth. How? What? What? Mr. Wright has a point. That's why I told her not to say that in her testimony. Please. Yet now she has said it, Mr. Von Karma. How could you possibly see Mr. Edgeworth? Explain yourself. Miss Hart. What? Could you see the defendant that night? Of course. I said I could, and I meant I could. Then please testify about, your, about the circumstances of your sighting. I did it. I finally found a hole in Von Karma's carefully vague testimony. On to the next testimony. Also, uh, I feel like I'm doing the judge's voice a bit too higher to compensate, or a bit higher in pitch to compensate for Von, Korm Von Karma's incredibly deep voice. How Edgeworth was seen. You're right, it was a cold night and the fog was thick as grits. So once I finished setting up my camera, I got back in the car. Still, I brought my binoculars with me. When I heard that noise out on the lake, I looked with my binoculars. See? No problem. Hmm, you used binoculars. Very well, you may begin your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. This one better be good. How Edgeworth was seen. You're right, it was, it was a cold night and the mist was thick as grits. So, how could you see Edgeworth? Now, just hold your horses for a second. You hate the Yankee types think you never find out where I'm from. Defense attorneys have trouble with that as it is. <laughs> Jesus. Nobody loves me. The so once I finished up sitting up my camera, I got back in the car. Your camera? Yeah, it's gotten automatic. The issue we are concerned with here is Miss Hart seeing Mr. Edgeworth. The camera has nothing to do with this at all. Objection sustained. Uh, he's not letting her answer any of my questions. Still, I brought my binoculars with me. Binoculars? Yeah, binoculars! Yesterday you mentioned that you were out looking for shooting stars, correct? Well, yeah. Wouldn't you need a telescope, not binoculars, for that? 
I've got doubts about your camera, too. Was that really to take pictures of meteor showers? The camera is irrelevant to this case. You can't say that for certain. Hmm, Mr. Wright, is the camera really relevant to this case? If you believe it is, you may continue with this line of questioning. But know this, if you find nothing with this, there will be consequences. Well, Mr. Wright, do you wish to press further about the camera? This is make it or break it time. The camera is of utmost importance, Your Honor. It is perhaps the key to this entire case. Therefore, I will continue my line of questioning. Wow, maybe I went a little overboard there. Very well. Miss Hart, you will testify to the court about the camera. Yeah, yeah, I hear ya. A camera was set up to take a picture of a meteor shower. Miss Hart, what made you choose that lake to photograph meteors? You know the fog gets thick on that lake. It's not very suited to stargazing. Yeah, well, you see, I... I guess I wasn't thinking too straight. Har. Mr. Wright, I will not have you badgering my witness because of her challenged intellect. Now, wait a minute. Continue with your testimony. You were saying how it was you that... that how it was that you saw Edgeworth. Eh, no unnecessary comments, please. When I heard that noise out on the lake, I looked with my binoculars. If there was a heavy fog, how would binoculars change that at all? What do you mean? Even binoculars can't see through fog. But you say you clearly saw him? Er, I did, yeah. Enough. There is no room for doubt in her testimony. Hmm, you sounded pretty doubtful to me. But I have to find a clear contradiction first. I don't care how many von Karmic objections I get. I'm going to find a hole in this testimony if it's the last thing I do. You're right, it was a cold night and the mist was thick as grits. Okay, so the contradiction here is... Well, the contradiction here is... Camera was set up to take pictures of a meteor shower. However, if you'll remember, it's set to automatically take a picture when a loud noise is detected, and it faces the lake. Both of those things contradict that, because if it's set up to take pictures when loud noises are heard, like, shooting stars and meteor showers don't make loud popping noises. And why would you face the lake instead of facing the sky, where the meteors are? You were photographing shooting stars? That's a lie. Says who? I saw the camera you set up yesterday. It was pointed directly at the lake. You have, you have to point a camera upwards to take photos of the stars, Miss Hart. Oof. Mr. Wright, what are you driving at? The witness was not at the lake to photograph shooting stars, Your Honor. Well, then, what exactly was she photographing? Your Honor, take a look at this. What was Miss Hart trying to photograph at the lake? Miss Hart, this is what you were trying to photograph. What's this? A newspaper article? Gordy. Ah, the sighting at Gord Lake. Well, Miss Hart? Uh, I never heard of no lake monster. You got proof or something? Let's see you prove I was down at the lake trying to photograph this Gordy. I have it. Proof. Hmm. Intriguing. Very well. Let's see it. And no joking around this time, please. Here is proof that the witness was trying to photograph Gordy, the lake monster. The proof, Miss Hart, is your own camera. Your camera was set to take photos in response to, a loud, to loud noises, correct? Thus, the photograph here taken when a gun fired on that lake. And here, this article about Gordy. According to this article, Gordy made a loud noise when it emerged. Well, you were trying to photograph Gordy, weren't you? That's why you had set your camera to respond to loud noises. 
Order, order. I see. I too thought it was a little strange. Yeah, sure. Well, Miss Hart? You were camping there to try and take fo a photo of Gordy, weren't you? Yeah. Not bad. Are all you lawyers that smart? So, smart boy, I was down there to try trying to photograph Gordy. You got me. So what? Huh? That don't change what I saw, does it? Exactly. What you just used several precious minutes of our time to prove is nothing more than the witness is an idiot who thinks monsters exist. <laughs> hey! But, as she so succinctly said, so what? It changes nothing. Not true. You were hiding the whole thing about Gordy for some reason, I know it. But what could it have been? Whatever it is, I'm getting to the bottom of this. Miss Hart. Why did you hide the fact that you were searching for Gordy from the court? Please revise your testimony. Right, fine. I'll testify. Won't change nothing, though. Something will change. It has to. And I'm going to spot it. Lada's new testimony. Actually, I'm not a research student at a university. I'm an investigative photographer. Imagine what a scoop it'd be if I got a picture of that monster. That's why I was camping out by the lake. But that's all I was hiding. When I heard the bang, I looked right straight out at the lake. There wasn't much else to look at, so I just watched that boat the whole time. Then I saw a flash near one of the man's hands and I heard another gunshot. I was looking right at that boat. The whole time, crossed my heart and hoped to fry. Hmm. Very well, very well. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. The witness's testimony is unchanged from before. Whether she is a research student or a photographer has no bearing on this case. There is no need to waste more of our time with another pointless cross-examination. Uh, hmm. I claim the defense's right to cross-examine the witness, Your Honor. Mr. Von Karm is up to something, I know it. He doesn't want me to cross-examine her because... Why? Is there a contradiction? Very well. You may begin the cross-examination. You seem sure of yourself. You must have something in mind. Huh. That would be a first. <laughs> Very funny. You understand that this is your last chance at a cross-examination, Mr. Wright. If there is no problem with the testimony this time, we will let the witness leave. I will announce my verdict, verdict at that time, Mr. Wright. Understood? Yes, Your Honor. Lada's new testimony. Actually, I'm not a research student at a university. What manner of person are you? I'm not sure I'm high and foul. I'm highfalutin enough to be called a manner of anything. I'm an investigative photographer. An investigative photographer? Yep. You get your photo and sell it to the press. It's that kind of business. Hey, I was taking pictures at my sister's graduation last year, and guess what? Um, what? There was a UFO just a-hanging in the sky. A UFO? You know, an unidentified flying object? A UFO. That's when I had a sort of revelation. I knew I should become an investigative photographer. I... I see. Kind of a shaky basis for a career. Imagine what a scoop it'd be if I got a picture of that monster. Is Gordy really all that newsworthy? Heck yeah! They even had him up on the TV! I'm not sure that appearing on the local news Rumor of the Month show qualifies. Last month's show was Bigfoot sighted on Acorn Hill, I believe. Hey, they also had a picture of him in the newspaper, for real! Mr. Wright, this is one fight I do not believe you can win. Let's keep moving, shall we? Yes, Your Honor. That's why I was camping out by the lake. That's why you put the automatic sensor on your camera? Yep, borrowed it from a friend at a university. 
It analyzes every sound it picks up, and when it gets a bang, it's an after shot. Yep. So, how many pictures has it taken so far? The only time the camera triggered was that night. Hmm. That's all I was hiding. I think it's the time you told us why you felt you had to hide your true purpose at the lake. Heck, if word got out what I was up to, the lake be swarming with competitors. Competitors? Yeah, second rate shitterbugs trying to steal my scoop. Ah, is that the only reason you were hiding the truth? Well, actually. Mr. Wright, I'll not have you asking questions with no relevance to this case. Whatever you say, Von Karma. I know you told her to keep it quiet. When I heard the bang off, I looked straight out at that lake. Exactly what sort of sound was it? Well, I had never heard one before, so I can't say for sure, but it sounded like a gunshot. It was a lot sharper a sound than I would have expected. Hmm. There wasn't much else to look at, so I just watched that boat the whole time. There wasn't much else to look at? Yep. I don't know, she heard a bang and she thought Gordy was out there. I kinda doubt she'd waste any time looking up at the boat. What? What did I do now? What are you giving me that look for? Definitely suspicious. Maybe it's time for some evidence. Witness, continue. Hold your hush, Bubby Spops, I'm getting there. Then I saw a flash near one of the man's hands and I heard another gunshot. Was there nothing on the lake but the boat at the time? Huh? Wait, so you're thinking maybe he was shot from some other place? I don't think so, nope. The lake was smooth as glass, and nobody was on shore either. Hmm. I'd better find some sort of contradiction in this testimony. I won't be able to beat Von Karma any other way. There has to be something. So the contradiction here is that... There wasn't much else to look at, so I just watched the boat the whole time. However, like Phoenix said, if she, saw, if she thought that Gordy was out there, she probably would have scanned the lake for Gordy. Miss Hart, were you really looking at the boat? What's with you? Of course I was looking at it. It was the only thing there, and a normal person would be looking at it. I agree, any normal person would. But you are far from normal. What? Y'all want to step over here and say that? You were camping at the lake to take a picture of Gordy. Think about it. What would you do if you heard a loud noise? You'd be scanning the lake for any sign of Gordy, that's what. You wouldn't give the boat a second thought. Ah! Order. Continue, Mr. Wright. You testified that you were watching the boat through binoculars. However, you wouldn't, read, you wouldn't need binoculars to watch that boat. You needed them in search of Gordy, and that's what you were doing. Well? Hmm. Well, now that y'all mention it, I did sort of take my binoculars and kind of scan the lake a bit. I mean, Gordy might be out there and all. Miss Hart, are you saying that you were not watching the boat then? Sorry, y'all. I wasn't fibbing, really. I was just, I thought, you know, I could be a witness to a murder and all. I kind of got excited. I was sure I was watching that boat. Till now. This, this is totally uncalled for. B but hey, you got the photograph, you got proof. Hmm, still we can't see who is shooting who in this. Right, right. That's why I took this photo and... Witness, that's enough. You've had a long day. Shut your pie hole. Shut my what? What was she going to say? You took the photo and... What? Wait a second. She even had photograph, a photograph to prove it. We can't really tell from the photo who's shooting who. That's why she said she's going to enlarge the photo. She said it'll drop the quality of my, but it'll let us see who's who. He enlarged that photo. Why won't Von Karma let her show it? I've got a hunch. I bet that enlarged photo shows something bad for Von Karma. This is my chance. 
If I'm wrong, though, it'll mean prison for Edgeworth. Or worse. Whatever should I do? Miss Hart, look at this photograph. You enlarged this photograph, did you not? Yeah, yeah, I did. Why has that enlargement not been presented to the court? Because it does not exist. What are y'all talking about? You were the one who told me not to show it to the court in the first place. You old fool. What's the meaning of this, Mr. Von Karma? Uh, um... Miss Hart. Show the photo to the court. Show us the enlargement. The prosecution objects to the submission of this evidence. Objection denied. The witness will show the enlargement to the court. Here it is. Hmm, you still cannot see who is firing in this. It could be the defendant, or maybe it's not. Regardless, I'll accept this as evidence. Big photo added to the court record. Happy now, Mr. Wright. Hmm, there has to be something. You asked for an enlargement, you got the enlargement. And little good it has done any of us. That's why I requested she not show it. Hmm. I suppose this means the cross-examination is over, obviously. And I would like to close the cross-examination of Miss Lata Hart. And none too soon. That was a flagrant waste of my time. Mr. Von Karma, do, have, do you have anything to add? I stated everything I needed to when this trial began. Decisive evidence. A decisive witness. What else could possibly be required? Nothing, of course. And I believe it is time for me to declare my verdict. Wait. It's not supposed to go like this. There has to be a clue in this photo. Somewhere. This is bad. Real bad. What should I do? Your Honor. There's something decidedly strange with this enlargement. Well, what might that be? Mr. Wright, we will show the court what you mean. What about this photo is strange? Okay, here goes nothing. I'll show the judge what's strange about this photo. Here, Your Honor. The shooter? I'm not sure I understand. What about the shooter is strange? Look at the hand holding the pistol, Your Honor. The hand? That hand directly contradicts another piece of evidence. This man's left hand does what? This man's left hand does what? Let me show you. I'll show you the evidence that the left hand contradicts. The evidence is clear. The man in this photograph is holding that pistol in his left hand. However, the prints on the murder weapon were from Edgeworth's right hand. Ergo, the man shooting the pistol in this photograph is not Mr. Edgeworth. Now that everyone in the courtroom has quieted down, I'd like to reconvene this court of law. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor? You have given us definitive proof today. We now know it was not Mr. Edgeworth who fired the pistol that night. However, this leaves us with a rather large problem. If Mr. Edgeworth didn't do it, then who shot our victim? Precisely. As we have seen, there were no other people on the lake that night. Who but the defendant could have shot the victim? The only There's only one explanation remaining. The man who shot the victim was none other, th none other than the victim himself. Order, order. So, you are saying that the victim committed suicide? Yes, your honor. I can think of no other explanation. Hmm. Indeed, that does seem to be the only remaining option. I'm so very, very sorry, Mr. Wright. But suicide is out of the question. Wh what? An examination of the victim's wound reveals the distance at which he was shot. The distance? The victim was clearly shot further than a meter away. A meter? That's three feet. 
There is no way it could have been suicide. Order, order. Mr. Von Karma, are you sure of the accuracy of your data? Of course. I had already considered the possibility of suicide, you see. Autopsy report updated in the court record. Hmm, I see. Very well, allow me to state my opinion. Considering the situation, the shooter had to be the defendant, Mr. Edgeworth. However, the prints on the gun revealed that the shooter was not Mr. Edgeworth. This is a conundrum. Therefore, I would like to suspend proceedings for the trial for today. The court orders the defense and the prosecution to further investigate this matter. Understood? Yes, Your Honor. That is all. The court is adjourned. December 26th, 1.15 p.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 2. Whew, that was a close one. Hey, don't you have anything to say? No, I've yet to be declared innocent, right? Well, yeah, but what happened out there on that lake, anyway? If he didn't commit suicide, then who? The shooter was about a meter away, too. What? Don't give me that look. I did not kill him. I was just kidding around. Oof. Look, I'm going to go check on Maya. Oh, right. What? Tell her something for me. What? Tell... Tell her to watch what she says in court. That's all. Yeah, I'm sure she'll be happy to hear you say that, Edgeworth. Jerk. I requisitioned a transcript of Lada's entire testimony. I thought it might give me some ammunition for the trial tomorrow. Of course she didn't see the shooter. So the only part of her testimony that stood was the bang she heard. 